Uh, welcome. We're here at uh, AndevCon 2014 in the uh, grand foyer of the Grand Hyatt Regency here in San Francisco. I'm uh, with Larry Schieffer. Larry, you're an instructor with us here at New Circle. You're also, I believe, the CTO of HiQs. Yes, that's Tell correct. Tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what you're passionate about. Sure. So, uh, as you mentioned, I'm the CTO for HiQs. We uh, do software development throughout the entire stack. Uh, so we work uh, from bootloader all the way up through end applications on uh, embedded systems, desktop systems, but uh, most notably mobile, uh, and with a big focus on Android. Uh, in addition to that, I also author uh, different kinds of training, uh, online training, and as you mentioned, I do teach for New Circle uh, and periodically do uh, in-person training. Excellent. So let's get right into the technical meet, up, or meet here. So uh, tell me a little bit about the... Uh uh, world of security. So you do embedded, you do security, and I think you've mentioned you're working as well with Android Studio. So let's start out with uh, security. Sure. Okay. Uh, so what's your take right now on the state of security in Android? You know, it's really interesting. I think there's a lot of things good going on within the platform uh, that are making aspects about the platform very secure um, underneath the hood. I think end users are still left vulnerable, and that's the biggest complaint we're seeing in Android. Yeah, the way the permission system is set up, it's very confusing. Uh, most users don't understand it, and right now, it's an all or nothing thing. And um, we don't really know where that's going to go, if that's going to change at all, but I definitely see that as one of the weakest points in the system. So if I'm an end user right now, and I'm trying to be a security conscious end user, what are my options? I mean, like. I, I want to install Facebook, but I've got, you know, Facebook says it wants access to my contact list. Is there any protection I have? Unfortunately, right now, there's really not. So the, the biggest protection you have is using the Google Play Store uh, as opposed to a third-party marketplace, some kind of alternative marketplace, uh, or side-loading apps. So one of the biggest threats that we have out there is uh, tricks people do to, to get the end user to turn on side-loading which would then allow an app to be installed outside of the marketplace or outside mm. of the Play Store. Uh, and that can leave you susceptible to all kinds of problems. You know, people can steal your contact information, your private details. Um, you know, they could start sending uh, premium SMS messages without your knowledge. Uh, so all those kinds of things can happen very easily uh, if you're not careful about where you're getting your applications from. Fair enough. And what are some of the innovations then that are kind of happening that you see coming up in the future that might really help change the landscape? Um, right now, it's unclear, right? So uh, we don't know exactly what Google's working on behind the scenes. Um, you know, there's always the rumor mill and what's going on, and you can find certain hidden APIs down within the AOSP framework uh, that could selectively, you know, turn off a permission. Um, but I think that's a really hard problem to solve. Uh, with the way that Android applications are constructed and the way the security model uh, is created, you basically state, I'm going to use this feature and this permission, and you code for that because it's a one-time thing. It's an all or nothing at install time. And so if we start turning those things off selectively as a user, what is that going to do to the end application? It's going to throw security exceptions internally and the way the development paradigm is, or the programming paradigm, you ask for the permission, you code for the feature, you're not necessarily expecting to receive that security exception. And so if that were to change behind the scenes and enable that kind of feature without some other kind of provision put in place within the framework to handle that, you're going to end up with all kinds of apps already in the marketplace which are going to fail unexpectedly, which would be really bad for app authors as mm -hmm. well as the experience for the end user. Mm. Excellent. So, for people right now, it's uh, November 2014. Is Android Studio ready for prime time? Uh, it's an excellent question. I think it is. Uh, again, I've been using it for a long time. We made the switch over very early uh, within my development teams. Um, I think it's very stable for most end applications. It still has its occasional glitches. They're still working out things. Um, you know, if you're willing to live life a little on the edge, then uh, moving to, you know, the Canary Channel can also be done. Uh, it's usually where we sit and we develop from, uh, which works out okay for us. So, as long as you're willing to deal with that, but you know, it doesn't have any more issues than I've ever seen with Eclipse, so. <laughs> Fair enough. It's not like uh, Eclipse has no issues. There. Right, exactly. <laughs> Excellent. How do you like the new build system, ba Gradle-based? Um, you know, I enjoy Gradle. I, I think it's, uh, it's an interesting way of uh, working with things. Um, the way that it handles dependencies in the, uh, the DSL, the, the domain specific language, um, you know, it's a very interesting way of doing things and I think it has a lot of power. 
uh, that's available to it. My biggest complaint, like everyone else, is the speed. Um, it does slow your build down significantly, and I know that they're working on that. So I'm hoping we'll start to see some leaps and bounds there, uh, certainly before we get to that official 1.0. Oh, excellent. So uh, what about uh, testing now? So the, the state of the art when it comes to testing in Android, especially you've been doing a lot of custom application development and custom ROMs, and it seems like there's not necessarily one good way to do testing, but you know, all of our viewers are like, if I want to get started testing, what, where, where's a good place to start if I want to just get the biggest bang for the buck? What do you guys do? So normally what we do is we use the JUnit framework and we try to test our internal components as best we can, uh, particularly the, uh, the model uh, for our data. Uh, specifically, um, or any kind of core libraries that we build internally. We will try to unit test them as best we can. Uh, we'll also typically run something like Monkey against our applications and make sure we're dealing with, you know, strange inputs or being, you know, hammered with lots and lots of input. But unfortunately, beyond that, it's kind of tough, right? The test framework, if you're going to use RoboJuice or uh, Espresso, something like that, uh, they work and they're a little better at dealing with the UI uh, automated testing, but it still hasn't met exactly what we're looking for. So we rely on a really good QA staff. Um, they work right alongside our developers in an agile environment, so they're involved from the very beginning. We don't just develop and then hand off to QA at the end of a project. We keep them involved throughout the project development. Uh, so they're very well aware of our UX design and uh, the business logic and what's going on, and so they've got a stake in it throughout the development process, which is pretty key for us in, in making sure that we release quality products. Oh, excellent. Now, when you mentioned the JUnit, are you referring to like just JUniting, JUnit testing the business logic, or are you referring to really using the instrumentation and running on the device where you're actually driving the UI? Uh, predominantly, it ends up being just the JUnit, but we do use some of the instrumentation uh, where needed. Oh, very cool. And uh, what about Calabash? Are you guys doing any kind of like uh, behavior-driven testing or UI automation? Uh, no, at this time we're not. Fair enough. So, Larry, uh, you are one of the few uh, developer or Google developer experts. Tell us a little bit about what it means to be a uh, Google developer or Android developer expert and what that program is and how other people might look at and be interested in that program? Sure, so the Google Developer Expert Program is something that uh, Google established a couple of years ago uh, to basically pull people in who really work hard with the community uh, to make people aware of Google technologies and help promote Google technologies. Uh, they tend to be experts in a specific field or multiple fields of Google technologies. So it covers a wide range of Google products and uh, I was recently accepted uh, as an Android GDE. So what are your responsibilities and what's the vetting process like? So responsibility wise, uh, it's all about community engagement. So it's, it's coming to events like this, it's speaking at events like this. Um, possibly uh, responding uh, to questions on forums, writing technical articles, uh, you know, possibly writing a book or training materials, things like that, uh, is really what Google is looking for in their Google Developer Experts program uh, on the given technologies. Um, you have to remind me what the follow-up question was. So the follow-up question was, what's the vetting process? If somebody out there says, I could do that, okay, what's so the process? The vetting process uh, for becoming a Google a, Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> so the vetting process for becoming a Google developer expert is uh, you have to be recommended for the program either by a Googler or someone who's an existing Google developer expert. Uh, at that point, uh, you go through a bit of a process with Google themselves uh, where you'll be interviewed uh, by other Google developer experts as well as people within uh, Google to make sure that uh, you are of the type of caliber that they're looking for uh, for their expert program and that you are staying engaged and are, are want to be engaged with the community uh, to try to promote those products. And coming from that angle then, people are writing applications for Android now mm -hmm. and you've been seeing lots of code written by different companies. What is the number one mistake that you see developers naively making that if you could just tell the world, guys, watch out for this, it's going to change your life, what would it be? Uh, understanding the fundamentals of the application environment that you're working in and the building blocks and components in an Android application. 
So most developers, especially when they first get started, they don't understand how the components interact with each other um, or even what those building blocks are and what they're used for. Uh, and most especially the threading model and how each of these components is really running in a single thread. Uh, and so it can really trip up a lot of people and cause a lot of heartache. And do you see anybody innovating in the world of threading, like to come up with design patterns and other techniques that are making coordinating amongst those threads smoother and easier and helping to eliminate some of those resource leaks? Um, not so much from the resource leaks perspective that I've seen. Um, however, I, I have seen some things out of like the RX Java Camp and RX Android, the reactive uh, extensions, mm -hmm. uh, and some good things coming out of there. Um, I have yet to actually apply it in one of our projects. Um, but everything I've been reading and researching on it, it really looks like a lot of promise. It eliminates uh, a lot of the concerns people have with uh, threading, um, you know, using observables uh, and, and really handling things in a very different way. Uh, and I think it really has a lot of potential to help new developers as they get familiar with it. So watch for RX job on an Android. Yeah, I think so. We're going to watch out for it. Thank you very much for joining. And I'm right. really glad you came out. And, Thanks uh, for having go me. Go enjoy the conference. All Thanks right. again. I appreciate it.